In December, AirCookie and WLED came out with the beta release of 0.14.01, which enables support for 2D matrices or matrices. Today we're going to take a brief look at that release and dive into how to modify it to scroll custom text. Let's get going. In the beta release 0.14.0 for WLED, there are a lot of minor enhancements to the UI and back-end performance improvements. However, there are two noticeable changes for the release. Audio reactivity via user mod or sound simulation and 2D matrix support. While there is a lot of excitement in the discussion around the sound reactive integration, I'm less interested because it requires sound sensors to be added to your WLED board and your board has to be able to hear the song and sound it's reacting to. My show has multiple WLED boards both inside and outside of my house and I run my show using FPP and X lights broadcasting on an unused radio frequency so my boards are not in listening range. However, I am excited to quickly cover the beta release 14.0 because of the 2D matrix support. Primarily because I have a matrix in my current show and the default patterns for a single one-dimensional string are okay, but they could be much better. I primarily run my WLED props with X lights, but between the times where the show is running, I'd like to run a few cool two-dimensional patterns and show some text notifications that could tell those watching what radio channel I'm using and to tune in to more about the show itself. Let's dive into it. So here, if I go open up my WLED, this is the 14.0. If we pop over to the, WD, the LED configuration, uh, one of the things I uh, noticed that was new were these three checkboxes. Make a segment for each output, uh, custom bus start indices, and use global LED buffer. Make sure these are unchecked unless I had an issue uh, when I first loaded up 14.0 and I checked this make a segment and it ended up kind of duplicating what was on my matrix. Uh, other than that, everything else, there's a there's some minor tweaks on some of this, uh, but most of this should look very familiar. Now, the main thing that we are going to cover here is this 2D configuration. And we're going to set this up to look like a matrix. By default, it's set up as a 1D strip. So you'll want to change your stripper panel to a 2D matrix. Now, this is the one kind of beef I have with the 14 release is because it expects that everything that you're using is a matrix or a single dimensional string. Up until now, everything has been a single string and you kind of segment up between ports and different LEDs on your, on your strand and it's one single continuous strand. Um, if you don't want that, you can have everything as a 2D matrix. The way I have my board right now is I have one controller controlling my matrix and the window outlines. So I can't, I, if I choose to use the 14 release and use this 2D matrix, I have to set my controller to only support a 2D matrix and not my windows. I will need to split this up into two different WLED controllers, one that controls my windows outlines and one that controls my matrix. I can't control matrixes and lines on the same controller. Um, but that's that's a minor thing right now. Once you select this, uh, you'll get this additional setup. The panel dimensions, uh, usually uh, if you if you get into this uh, hobby, there's P5 and P10 uh, panels. And you can create a matrix made up of these different panels. So it's basically a matrix made up of matrices. And you, you define your your base dimensions here for your, your pan the, the size panels, how many LEDs uh, width and height you'll use. Now, I'm very fortunate that my matrix is just one panel. It's basically 34 pixels by 26 pixels, and you can kind of see that here. That's not, uh, too, fa not too fancy. I'm not making it up of one panel. So on this next line, I'll just say one horizontal panel and one vertical panel. Uh, the, one, the, the first panel is uh, starts at the bottom left, so if I'm doing sections of panels, uh, they'll just start at the bottom left and kind of work their way up. Uh, orientation is horizontal. Again, this really doesn't matter because I'm only using one and same thing with serpentine. What does matter is my LED panel layout. So because I only have panel, I only have one panel, I'm given this panel zero. Now this first LED says I have different options here. I can either start at the bottom or top and I can start either at the left or right. And for my matrix, I, I choose to start at the bottom left. And what is that? What does that really mean? Well, if I take a look at the wiring diagram here, this is my matrix if I look at it from the front. If you notice, the one, the first pixel in my matrix is down at the bottom left. You can see one, and it'll, as you start moving to the right, one, two, three, four, all the way over to 34, the first 34 pixels, it'll move to the right. And then it goes up to the next row and then heads back all the way back to 68. And it kind of runs like a, serp like, like a snake or a serpentine. 
So that's essentially how my matrix is set up. The data will flow from the bottom left hand corner and over to the right and then back over to the left, to the right, back left, all the way up for 26 uh, iterations. And that's what, that's what that really means here in this setup. My first LED is in the bottom left and the orientation is horizontal. That means I'm going up, I'm going left and right instead of up and down. And it's serpentine, meaning that it'll come back the way it came. So once I've done that, I'd save this and I'm just gonna hit back because I don't need that right now. And it's set up. Now, one of the things you notice here, uh, we used to have in the 13, 0.13.0 is just three colors here and you can choose a color palette. Now, depending on the effect that's being run, there'll be different options here. Right now you can see the FX, you can see it kind of popping back and forth and that's because I'm running through my presets. Let me stop the presets here and just run the color bursts. So right now color bursts, all I need to do is, as you can see in the color, I need to have a, a palette running. I can choose, you know, aqua flash and that changes my, my palette colors. Um, I can go to a different, uh, well, let me go to a different preset like spaceships and go back to colors here. Actually, let me go to scrolling text and then go back to colors here. And you notice that there's a, an FX in that background. So I can see that the FX right now, actually I have a, a I could say a, this is always a single color like this, and it'll always be uh, this particular color. Or I could do a pattern like say can, uh, candy and it'll start iterating through those colors. Now you notice this is at a very low brightness. I can jack up the brightness and it'll look a lot brighter. In the, in the display, um, presets are very similar to the 13. You have your mate, you have your playlist where you can specify the different uh, presets. And I've saved three, th I've saved three two-dimensional uh, presets here to kind of cycle through them. Now, one thing you know, you'll notice here that's different is that each of these different um, effect. When I go to the effects tab, each of these has a different icon. Some of them have these little palette. Uh, icons, so I'll have the, the kind of hamburger dots. Um, what we want to filter on, and this little filter down here below, I can filter based on uh, what effects support which set it, set up. Some of them are music effects, sound, sound reactive effects, and this little grid here is the matrix effects. So that's really what we want to cover right now. And you'll notice all the effects that show up are supporting, uh, have the, the matrix set up. So given that, if I was to say run the Akimi, it has the little WLED logo there, uh, black hole has a couple effects. Some of these are really neat, like the DNA spiral uh, and DNA. Uh, pr primarily, you can go ahead and play around with this, but you can not notice actually, well, this is really bright. Let me knock down that. Let me knock down that a little bit. But you can go ahead and play with this. But there are a lot of cool options. Now, I noticed some of the fast LED uh, matrix options are not in there, so I might want to look about playing around with that. Another cool feature that they added with the 2D matrix is the peak feature. If you remember, for our one-dimensional patterns, if I was to hit peak, it would be a single strand and it would show all the patterns that the different segments were making. However, with the matrix, if I hit peak, I can see a virtual 2D matrix. I can check this virtual matrix with my actual matrix to see if it's displaying as it needs to show. Here I have spaceships. If I was to go to say something like DNA spiral and look at a peak, it should look very similar to the virtual matrix. Lastly, here's the reason why I pulled my earlier version of the video down. There was a major edit I needed to make before too many people follow me down the dark path, and that is with the scrolling text. Now, by default, the scrolling text rolls with the date and time. You can see here, January 16th. I couldn't find any documentation about customizing the scrolling text effect. So what I did is I went into code and I modified it with the sliders here. You can see I added a new slider, and I modified it by going here. However, there is a much easier way to do this besides modifying code. Ross Castona was the first one to point this out to me. Essentially, all I need to do is modify the name of the segment, and that's what the scrolling text will be. Seems like a very simple uh, solution rather than going through code. So let's take a look at how to do this. If I was to go over to the segments, if I was to, instead of segment zero, if I was to use this little pencil icon and modify this, I could say, welcome to bites of pie and hit the check mark. And you can see it changed the scrolling. So that's a lot easier than what I was doing by modifying code. 
that concludes this demo. I really had fun learning about 14 and thanks and shout out to Ross and the others that pointed out a couple of additional pieces I wasn't aware of. I hope this video was able to help some get deeper into the matrix. Thanks for watching Bites of Pie.